in early 2005, I traveled through Uganda with my partner Usha. We flew into Kampala and left for our first destination, the beautiful Kibale National Park, known for its chimpanzees and 12 other primate species, as well as 325 species of birds, including the African grey parrot. It was hot and steamy in the forest. Pretty quickly though, we saw a few black and white colobus monkeys and grey-cheeked manga bays. On our second day in the forest, we were specially lucky to see a few chimps, though they were all acting coy and stayed high up in the trees. After two days, we are now heading south to our second destination, the Queen Elizabeth National Park at the edge of Lake Edward, near Uganda's border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. As we arrive, we are greeted by two warthogs and an elephant outside the hotel. The park is home to nearly 100 species of mammals, including a species of tree-climbing lion and over 600 species of birds. On our morning walk around the hotel, we are greeted by water bucks, a horde of mongooses, more warthogs, and the same elephant we saw last night. Later in the day, we take a boat tour to check out some wildlife in and around the lake. Uh, these are the Uganda cops. Actually, these are the females sensitive to that they can't move forward during the day. So, where is. A green shank is hanging around the trees of the weavers, a weaver bird side. Uh, there's a cattle libret, a uh, white bird, a cattle libret. There was much sympathy in the boat for the elephant on the right, which had somehow lost its tail and had an open wound. The park also has many volcanic features, including volcanic cones and deep craters, many with crater lakes. We are now heading over to our third destination, the Sese Islands of Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world after Lake Superior in North America. The Sese Islands are an archipelago of 84 islands in Lake Victoria, and we are going to the largest of them, Bugala Island. The Sese Islands are sparsely populated and are home to the Bantu-speaking Basese tribe, closely related to the Baganda tribe, currently the largest ethnic group in Uganda. The primary industry in the Sese Islands is fishing. A lot of it is done for export, so overfishing is a significant concern. Agriculture, forestry and tourism are secondary industries.
This is the coastline and the village near the lodge where we stayed. In India, this joint would be a Kirana store and a Chaiki Dukan rolled into one. We are off to a walking tour of this part of the island with our guide, Martha. We walk through beaches, small settlements, forest paths and soon arrive at a brick making factory. Martha says that good jobs are so hard to find that even a couple of college graduates work at this factory making bricks. This in a country where the median age is close to 15. She shows us a contraption that's used to smoke fish among them tilapia and Nile perch. A few hours into the walk, Martha tells us that she's coming down with malaria. That explains why she has slowed down a bit. We offer to end the tour, but she says she wants to finish it. It strikes me that not only are we sitting ducks with a malarial parasite, Martha's behavior is hardly close to my own experience of coming down with malaria. She insists she wants to complete the tour. We spray ourselves with DEET and hope for the best. Martha showed us the remains of a little fortress built by John Speak, who explored this region with Richard Burton. Why he built this in the middle of the forest never became clear to me. Speak was not only attacked by local tribes, he also became temporarily deaf when a beetle crawled into his ear and he tried to get it out with a knife. We were soon back to the beach near our cottage and booked two Boda Boda drivers, Yuma and James, for a tour of the island the next day. By conventional yardsticks, Uganda is a very impoverished country, more than even India. What struck me, however, was how relatively clean it was, including streets and towns and villages, suggesting that poverty and physical squalor are only partially correlated. The lake has a massive coastline of 2,000 miles and is so large it has waves. The lake receives almost all of its water from rainfall 
and it receives enough of it to be the source of the River Nile. Notes from this journal would come in handy seven years later in the making of this video. Modern history books lovingly dwell over 19th century European explorers who first came here and fiercely debated whether this lake was the source of the Nile or not. What's funny is that the Africans of course had known it for a long time. Seven centuries earlier in fact, an Arab calligrapher Al Idrisi had even drawn an accurate map of the lake and correctly called it the source of the Nile. We are back at our lodge in time to watch a spectacular sunset. A foggy morning the next day, the plan is to explore another part of the island by foot, including new beaches, forests and sporadic settlements. Our guide for this walk is Alice. Only half of the 84 Sese Islands are inhabited and about 40,000 people live on them. Many still rely on subsistence fishing and cutting forest firewood. We meet Jacob Iapu, a fisherman who doubles up as the pastor of the Pentecostal church of Rutoboka, one of the settlements on the island. Soon it is time to head back to the ferry terminal and to make our way by road to Jinja, a town located on the north shore of Lake Victoria. Jinja is one of the largest cities in a leading commercial center of Uganda, though its population is only about 90,000. Wandering near the edge of town, we encounter a desolate looking Hindu temple. Up to 0.7% of Uganda's population is Hindu, but the Hindu population was larger until the brutal dictator Idi Amin expelled tens of thousands of them in 1972. Consistent with episodes of ethnic cleansing elsewhere, he portrayed Indians and Pakistanis as greedy, conniving, and always cheating, conspiring, and plotting to subvert Uganda and gave them 90 days to leave or else
we proceed to the point recognized as the source of the Nile. This is it. On the left is the vast Lake Victoria. On the right is the River Nile. There was once a large waterfall at this point, but a dam further downstream has eliminated this waterfall. It takes three months for the Nile waters to journey 4,000 miles through Uganda, Sudan and Egypt to reach the Mediterranean. Next door, a small garden commemorates Mahatma Gandhi and includes a bronze bust of the man. After his cremation, some of his ashes were brought here and scattered at the birthplace of the Nile. What follows are some sights and sounds of the city on a random afternoon. After two days in Jinja, we leave for our final destination in Uganda, its capital and largest city, Kampala. I should point out that mosques and churches are actually much more common in Kampala. Over 80% of Ugandans are Christian and about 12% Muslim. What's most amazing is that around 40 different languages are still spoken in Uganda, which is about the size of the UK and is only half as populous. As in India, English is the lingua franca. This UNESCO World Heritage Site contains four royal tombs and are an architectural achievement for their use of organic materials such as wood, thatch, reed, wattle and daub. I'm Namit Arora. Thanks for watching.